Hey guys, how's it going today? All right, I trust that everyone is feeling better, a little better than yesterday. All right, I want to reveal something over here, uh, which actually uh, some people asked me about it. So by uploading these audios, I'm not here to instruct or teach anyone. I choose these audios because this is my favorite way to develop myself on a daily basis, and I'm sharing them with you. Therefore, please consider it and incorporate it into your daily life. I'm not going to talk too much, okay? So once again, I would like to thank you for listening to my audios. Please try to listen to it more than once. Because like I said yesterday, that the brain is sometimes scattered. Actually, I meant brain is most of the time scattered and unable to concentrate. Which is why I continue to listen to these audios and sharpen myself every day. I would highly recommend you, whoever is listening right now, to Google Attention Span, S-P-A-N, not M, and find out about what I'm talking about. All right. And, uh, well, wishing you an awesome day. Enjoy and chill. I don't know why, but it seems this is, in general... It seems for me easier to experience sadness than to experience joy. So let's say you're in San Francisco and you get in your car, you're at the top of the hill and you decide that you're going to find out what momentum is. So you release the parking brake and take your car out of gear and you just nudge your car just a little bit. And it just rolls down that hill. The momentum of it, if you decide you're going to stop it, you wouldn't want to be at the bottom of the hill trying to stop it because you're not going to stop it. Momentum is a powerful thing. And that's all you're describing. You've got to catch it in the earlier stages. Because once momentum is going, in other words, you might say, yeah, I pushed my car from the top of a hill and it's just easier to let it go right into the bay than to try to stop it. And we say, yes, because that's a law of physics. And the law of physics is rampantly involved in law of attraction. It's all about physics. It's all about inertia. It's all about movement. It's all about momentum. There isn't anything in the laws of physics that isn't all wrapped up in law of attraction. That's what it all is about, you see. And we're not asking you to defy the laws of physics. And we're not asking you to defy the law of attraction. We would encourage you when your car starts to roll a little bit at the top of the hill, that you get out in front of it and you stop it when it's easy to stop. We wouldn't ask you to do otherwise. Stop it when it's easy to stop. And some of those thoughts are easy to stop. And sometimes you sort of wallow in them and then there's momentum. And then, for sure, it's easier to think those thoughts. For sure it is. You're not making it up. For sure it is. But the question isn't what's easier because law of attraction answers that question every day. It's not what's easier, it's what feels better. That's the question you gotta ask. So, Abraham, it's so much easier for me to think thoughts that don't feel good than to think thoughts that do feel good. Well, we get that because your habit of thought is causing that to happen. But if we ask you the question, which feels the best, you'd give a totally different answer. And if you really believe that you have no choice other than to feel bad, then we've got nothing for you. But if you start believing, hey, I can feel a little better. I can choose a little better thought. I can start my day off a little better. I can tune into my inner being because I've found no thought. And then I can let my inner being wean me off the negative thoughts and wean me on to the better feeling thoughts. Because your inner being will... Your inner being knows so many wonderful things about your future relationship, but you can't hear it. You've got your tuner tuned to a different channel, you see. So we're weaving in and out. We're wanting to give you the laws of physics, and we're wanting to talk to you about law of attraction, and we're wanting to talk about that different point of view that your inner being wants, and we're asking you to use your guidance system. And we know that you sort of kind of know all of this, but the bottom line is... If you want to feel bad, keep thinking those thoughts. And if you want to feel good, stop thinking those thoughts. 
And if it's hard to stop thinking those thoughts, then go to sleep. And if it's hard to stop thinking those thoughts, then meditate. And if it's hard to stop thinking those thoughts, then go to sleep again. And if it's hard to stop thinking those thoughts, then meditate again. And if it's hard to stop thinking those thoughts, then go to sleep. And if it's hard to stop thinking those thoughts, then meditate. And after a little while, it won't be hard to stop thinking those thoughts. But if every day you think those thoughts and every day you don't feel good, then every day it's going to be easy to think the thoughts that don't feel good. And so you just got to ask your question. It's like, I don't know how it got started, but I started hitting myself with the hammer. I don't know how it got started. It doesn't feel good, but it's easier to keep doing it than to stop. And we say, really? You say, yeah, really? It's a lot easier to keep doing this than to stop. And we say, well, really? Yeah, it's easier. It's easier. Now, that seems ridiculous. And so does this. It seems ridiculous. It seems ridiculous. It's like, I have no control over my thoughts. That's not even close to true. Or I only have one thing to think about and it sucks. That's not close to true either. What about things that make me feel good, but maybe they're bad for me? You know, let's say I enjoy eating. Maybe I eat too much. Yeah. <laughs> you should just get in that car and release the brake and let it. <laughs> it takes some sorting out, doesn't it? We get it that always from the beginning of our offering, someone would give us a worst case scenario because we're asking them to find something good to feel about. And they'd say, well, how can you feel good when this is happening or this is happening or this is happening or this is happening? We say, you have to start gaining control when it's easy. And when you have something that's really, really bothering you, that's usually not the best subject to start trying to gain control about. Do you believe that law of attraction is a real thing? Yes. And do you believe that your inner being is a real being? Yes. And do you believe that your inner being has interest in you being happy? Definitely. And do you believe that your inner being thinks the thoughts that are the most conducive to your ongoing happiness? Yes. And do you believe that sometimes you tap into those thoughts? Yes. And do you believe that sometimes you're not tapped into them. Right. And do you know that your emotions tell you the difference between whether you are or you aren't? And do you believe that sometimes it's easier for you to choose good feeling thoughts than others? So that's what the process is. Just do your best to feel as good as you can feel when you can feel it. It's like sometimes, don't you find yourself visiting with someone and you know you could help them, but they just can't hear you? And don't you sometimes just walk away knowing that another hour of conversation isn't going to make it better? And the same thing is true with you. <laughs> we didn't mean, we don't have another hour, first of all. We didn't mean that we can't make it better because it's always better when you visit with us. It's always better because we know who you are and we know what you want and we know what words you're more likely to hear and what words you're not likely to hear. And we're willing to keep talking until we feel some movement in your vibration. But sometimes when you're visiting with another person, can't you tell sometimes that you're just getting nowhere? Well, sometimes with your own thought, it's just better to just shut it down. Just stop thinking about it. But the thing about, I'm not going to think about that anymore. That's not a good advice because you're thinking about the thing that you're not going to think about while you're thinking about not thinking about it. And so it's still got momentum. In fact, the harder you try not to think about it, the more you think about it. So you have to find other things to think about. There has to be more to your life than this. And we know sometimes you get into these relationships. Esther had a relationship with Jerry like that, where they were so intertwined in so many different ways, it felt like everything was related to that relationship. But she had to find a way to think outside that relationship because she was now outside that relationship as it had once been. And the thing that carried her through those difficult times was finding a glimpse of something that felt good and then just riding that for a little while until it became more dominant and 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 more dominant. 
The thing that you don't realize, and we want so much for you to hear it, is all of these delicious relationships that you have. At the heart of the deliciousness in them is your inner being who is still here. The reason that you are so in love with someone is because you're focused in alignment with your source and you're letting the love of your source focus through you toward them. So even though they have gone, the love of your source has not gone. The love of your source is still there for you to focus on the flower and on the dog and on the ocean and on the seminar and on the people and on the food, even on the food. <laughs> you see? So you can't get this wrong if your quest is to feel good and you can't get it right unless your quest is to feel good. Thank you. Yeah. Here's something really worth talking about. We want to break this to you gently. <laughs> you talk too much <laughs> to each other. You communicate too much. You do not allow yourself even a chance of hearing your inner being. The other day, Esther had been doing this and doing this and doing this. She had family visiting and they were wanting to fill every moment with something really, really fun and did. And when Esther left them at the airport, as she was driving away, her hand started doing this and she knew it was Jerry. And Jerry was saying, alone at last, alone at last, alone at last, alone at last, alone at last. In other words, finally an opportunity to get into your own thoughts. Finally an opportunity to renew yourself completely. Finally an opportunity to be all that you are not reflected back by someone else, but all that you are, tuning in and then flowing out to them, not waiting for their reflection to know who you are. So much communication. She watched the children and the adults around the tables, everyone with their phone, Snapchatting, Instagramming, emailing, texting, and no one listening to their inner being, listening to each other. We're talking about the world, not just Esther's family. We're talking about the world at large, so desperate for communication with one another that you can't take the time to hear what your inner being is telling you about all of that, you see. If we were standing in your physical shoes, we would detach from time to time. Most of the time, most of the time. <laughs> We'd put that phone on airplane mode and then we'd check in every hour or so and see what's going on. And we would train others to not be looking to you for their resources. We would put them in a position that they might tap into their own. And we would insist for ourselves that we're going to tap in to those resources and that we're going to enjoy the world, you see. There are so many people who are so frantically wanting to engage with each other and that's wonderful if the inspiration is coming. But when you're engaging to fill the void, rather than filling the void with alignment and then engaging, it's out of whack. Can you feel it? Can't you feel it? Can't you feel it? Doesn't your phone just ding one too many times about every minute? You see what we're getting at? Yes, I do. I truly understand it. Things that didn't used to bother me bothered me as I started disconnecting more. And now that I'm more aligned, I don't even understand what well, bothered me. Yeah, it takes the edge off of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's good. I statement. truly appreciate this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. We've enjoyed this interaction more than our words can express to you. We are appreciating your life. We appreciate what you're living. We appreciate the willingness that you had to come into this body and we appreciate your willingness to wake up in it every day. We appreciate your willingness to participate with each other and we are so appreciative of the new rockets of desire that you are sending off all day every day. We are appreciating the expansion of this vibrational vortex and we are appreciating your willingness to let yourself experience it a little more and a little more and a little more. We want you to know that even though this vortex exists and even though you have to get into the receiving mode 
to really enjoy it yourself, that your creation of it has brought us pleasure. Because we're receiving what you've put there. You fulfilled so much of what you intended by being willing to mix it up and ask for more. Because when you asked for more, it became. And for those like us that don't need to translate it visually or auditorily, who don't need to see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it, you created it and it is, and it is magnificent and we are joyful. So you did your part for us already. You expanded the universe. It's bigger. But the fun is when the thoughts turn to things. Because you didn't stay back into the non-physical ethers. You came out here where manifestation happens. This is the leading edge. This is the furthest forward that it is. This is where all the fun is. The thoughts turn into things. That's what you are here and that's what you are about. You are spiritual beings, but you have material all around you because you are the translator of the spirit into the material. You are the creator of this reality, you see. And while we've benefited already... Our powerful desire is that you find your way into it too. Not because you need more stuff, but because the creation of it is so much fun. Not because you need more answers, but because the finding of them is so much fun. If this time-space reality has the wherewithal to inspire a desire within you, it has the wherewithal to give you the full-blown, see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it, delicious feeling, visceral, tangible, same.